Has it been recording me and his whole no, conversation it hasn't. about like, we need to destroy the economy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, so I've been buying a lot of fertilizer. <laughs> I've been doing it under three shell companies, so they can't trace it all back to me. I found a really good supplier for mercury. We just watched Voodoo Apocalypse. Voodoo Apocalypse. And uh, I think it was kind of bad. If you like early 2000s uh, movies with a lot of... Uh, you know, racism and, yeah. you know, uh, homophobia, then, yeah. and it's made in 2018. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> From two th- takes place in the 70s. Um, Did it? <laughs> I, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Or the 80s? Because, like, the flashback that happened years ago and that was, says it was in 1974, I would assume, because that was on. Oh, like, that's when he died. It was yeah. five years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so it was, it, the was eight, it was the 80s, but they were all dressed like it was the 70s. This is Voodoo Apocalypse 2018. Uh, the three people on the cover, only two of them are actually in the movie. <laughs> yeah, we don't know who that lady is. She wasn't in the... Was this lady. Mm. There was a black female in the movie, <laughs> yeah. but it was not her. <laughs> Just a completely different woman. Um, but yeah, so I got this present... This movie, whoops, this movie. <laughs> it is a present. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from Papa Voodoo. Papa Voodoo himself. I needed a Christmas present for Ashton, and uh, I was at the dollar store, and they had movies, and so I grabbed this one, because it looked bad. And I think I was right. It's pretty bad. You got that for me for Christmas. I was like, um... Okay, this is cool, but like I can't watch this without him. <laughs> so it was just literally I kept it like in this little area in my like bedside drawer, like all wrapped up still. And I was like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to unleash the beast that is uh, Voodoo Apocalypse. Well, now that you've seen it once, you can go back and watch it as many times as you want. Yeah, you don't know, wait for me anymore. You I broke the I'm, seal. Yeah, I, I broke the seal. The seventh seal has been broken. <laughs> now the, Voodoo Apocalypse the, can just pour into yeah, your now life. It is time for the Voodoo Apocalypse. I think it was well worth the money. Um, <laughs> the whole dollar. They didn't break the 180 rule very much. Um, <laughs> the only rule that matters in cinema, <laughs> yeah, the 180 rule. That's the only one that matters. In my own unprofessional opinion, yeah, that is the only rule that matters. <laughs> uh, that's some good cinematography, I mean. Honestly, okay, so... They had a lot of extras. They did, they had a lot of extras, and I liked the color grading and the lighting of the movie, but that's uh, about the it. The Mexico color grading. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've seen like, that Willem yeah. Dafoe meme. It's like people in movies when they cross the yeah. Mexican border, <laughs> like yeah. switches from yellow to like... <laughs> yeah, from regular to like yellow color. It was funny. It was uh, They also had a lot of like bottle breaking on people's heads in all the fights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of decapitation. Yeah. <laughs> There, there were at least two, and I think actually there were only two. There were Someone, only two somebody got decapitated with a plastic like food yeah, food tray, a cafeteria food a cafeteria tray. tray. <laughs> yeah. Someone got like straight. what you get at like McDonald's or Wendy's or something that has your order on it. But to be fair, he was a zombie, which I would say I'm surprised yeah. at how long it took them to introduce the zombies into a movie. Yeah, about zombies yeah. um, everyone had some weird like kind of like tommy wiseau is accent where you couldn't like place where they were from me vanilla and his asian mafia i want this tn today did you show him in the picture Take a look. where you become a cop <coughs> a true kung fu master oh hi what floor are you going to i'm going to the third yeah yeah that part was really strange like the accents of all the actors i think the only person with a normal voice was the kid that was on screen for like two seconds shining shoes did he even say anything he said thank you sir thank you sir and that's it thank you <laughs> they sounded pretty yeah. normal yeah like a 19 like a 1920s like shoe shine kid but like somehow in the 80s in la in la he's like <laughs> dude it's Please, a Mister, let me shine your shoes <laughs> it's a bustling business and it's a growing economy it's bumping He's on that grind set. Uh, but yeah, so the movie starts in Mexico for some reason. Oh, you gotta be sure to mention the wonderful, uh, what do you even call it? Film? The color grading? The color? Not even the color grading, but just like the oh, little no, the film, the film specs. Yeah. yeah. There uh, was over the entire movie. I thought it was supposed to like signify like, this is the start of the movie. This is the flashback. Yeah, yeah. I and, thought like, oh, okay, this is 
yeah, the flashback, and it's going to fade out at some point, but no. I think that, like, someone slid that effect in when they were editing the movie in, like, Premiere Pro or, like... Well, you know, at the beginning, they had the credits for that, like, film company that, like, what was it? Vintage Film Company? Something com- like that. Yeah, Vintage Film Company, and I think it was, like... They, maybe that's it, a part a of their business. Maybe they, that's a part of their caveat is <laughs> <laughs> they have that's their staple. If you make a movie with them, they have to put that effect yeah, over. Yeah, they're it. like you you can't make a movie that takes place in old times without making it look like it was shot on the worst film that's, possible. That's how you make it a vintage film. I'd like to point out that in the 1970s and or 80s at this point is like the old times. It was like what like the 70s was 50 years ago. It was. That's wild. 52 years ago. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. I mean, I don't care, but it's weird because, like, when I think of the olden days... Anyone born in 1970 is old. And I'm referring directly to my parents. Comment <laughs> comment down below. <laughs> Dad, you dumb... But yeah, so the movie starts off in Mexico with a bar fight that ends up being, like, pointless. Yeah, so the main character is trying to, like, find... One of the main characters. The uh, other White main. Chocolate is White. His, his name. The Italian named White Chocolate. Because he's, he's sweet like chocolate. He's sweet like chocolate, <laughs> and as we say. <laughs> and I assume it's because he's white, yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, yeah, he goes and he literally kills an entire, like, kills people in a bar to it, like give a photo to the, only person the he main killed character was the innocent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he pulls out a gun and fires, and it just yeah, shoots yeah. A, a drummer in the mariachi band, and none of the people attacking him. And then they all like settle down, and then he's like, "Oh, where's this guy?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, he's, that's that's got to be some form of an oxymoron." Drummer in a mariachi band. It made me think. I don't know why, but when they were fighting, it made me think of that scene from Shrek when he's in the stadium and yeah, bad reputation like, place. <laughs> <laughs> and a bad reputation. Except this scene was better and was that, arguably more culturally significant <laughs> than the voodoo apocalypse. I don't know. So White Chocolate's looking for his partner. What's his partner's name? It was like Varga? Charlie Varga. Charlie Varga. Vargas. Vargas? Charlie, Charlie Vargas. Anyway, looking for this guy. In Portuguese. <laughs> ah, no. Charlie Vargas. Charlie Vargas. Charlie Vargas. Charlie Vargas. Okay. Um, and so he finds the dude participating in Lucha Libre. Yeah, it's a two versus one matchup. <laughs> and the woman gives birth at the beginning of the match and throws her baby at him. I don't know, man. Like, this movie was a, a wild ride. So think about it. We go from... I, I just want to point out that we go from Lucha Libre to Buddy Cop to Kung Fu Montage to Sacred Swords to Zombies in the last, like, 15 minutes. Yeah, all well expecting zombies because on, on the cover, it's literally, like, people with guns surrounded by zombies thinking that it's going to just start off right in Mexico and we'll be right into it, but no. I'm still not over the fact that when they go to find the sacred swords, Bruce Lee, (laughs) they find the dismembered corpse of Bruce Lee in the hallway leading to the swords (laughs) and proceed to find no traps, no guardians. It's just a, it's just a boring cave. Yeah. So like who, yeah, who died in there? You know, at least three people. I mean, I'm getting way ahead of myself. It it was all the same skeleton. I'm pretty sure. No, one was wearing the Bruce Lee outfits. So. Okay, but I mean like the prop. But yes, you're right. No, <sighs> one was wearing the, one was wearing the Bruce Lee. Yeah, outfit. that was actually Bruce Lee's skeleton, Jason. I didn't see the other one wearing a Bruce Lee outfit. <laughs> hey Siri, when did Bruce Lee die? Bruce Lee died July twentieth, nineteen seventy three, at age thirty two, in Queen Elizabeth Hospital. One year before <laughs> his <laughs> partner. Why? Wait. Maybe he was going to try and find the sword so to, to save, save his partner. Right? No, we gotta we gotta stop the voodoo guy. Could you imagine if they actually like planned the entomology of this movie around Bruce Lee's like, like the chronology of it? Yeah, yeah the they chronology. they had an actual on site historian, <laughs> so yeah, they could like time they were it like with major events. They filmed the time. like half the movie set in the '90s, and they're like, if you want to put Bruce Lee's skeleton in here, <laughs> you need it to, you're gonna need to change the time back. You're gonna a need bit. it to be around 1970. They had to reshoot the whole movie. <laughs> like shit. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so Lucha Libre to Los Angeles, 
and then it becomes like a buddy cop. They they beat up innocent people. There's like a whole montage of him just punching innocent people while his partner <laughs> just goes like, he's like mother. See, isn't that weird though? Because like I at the, the partner starts off as like the hot headed like yeah like, shoot a mariachi man for no reason. <laughs> White chocolate it starts the movie off in a bar fight, and then is the good cop halfway through. Like it's weird. So it's just a master class in character development. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to rapid fire through the rest of this. The partner was killed by Mr. Vanilla. Uh, uh, what was it? Jimmy Vanilla. <laughs> Jimmy Vanilla. So the partner of Vargas was killed by Jimmy Vanilla, and so they're trying to get revenge on Jimmy Vanilla, who's a drug dealer, and so they're trying to figure out where this guy went. But turns out in the flashback when he got shot he was then hauled off to haiti turned into imagine you get shot in some (laughs) podunk tavern in like los angeles and they're like get his ass on a plane to haiti now (laughs) yeah that's like what i what i said when we were watching the movie i was like someone get this man a witch doctor (laughs) someone get him papa voodoo now (laughs) And why was he the chosen one to they're yeah. like they're like this flamboyant piece of shit needs to be the next pop of yeah, this white guy. <laughs> they're like, it's the chosen one. I feel like they were trying to go somewhere with slavery too, considering <laughs> that like the swords yeah. were made from the chains of a thousand slaves. Wanna kill Papa Bur. You have to stake the host straight through the hut with the executioner's sword. Anything else? It's futile. What the f*** is the executioner's sword? Executioner's sword is a sword that is forged with the chains of a thousand freed slaves. Well, there were so many chains they had to make three <laughs> swords. <laughs> yeah, a thousand, just in case a you guys thousand. didn't know, a thousand chains can only make three swords. Three not even full swords. different sized katanas. <laughs> What was the name of it? It was like the, ex- the executioner. <laughs> yeah. Sword. So like the three swords were the executioner's sword in the cave of death on the mountain of shame, forged from the chains of a thousand you guys freed ever, slaves. You guys ever watch Community? Yes, I was watching it with. That uh, sounds like the scene where they go into the video game, and he's like, "You must go into the cave of darkness to get the white crystal." Picking up on some hidden symbolism. Oh man. So um. Haul him off to Haiti. Which doctor heals him, but also puts Papa Voodoo inside of him? So he gets resurrected it. as Papa Voodoo, the knockoff witch doctor from Princess, Princess and the, the Frog. Frog. <laughs> like the the suit and everything, it's the same outfit, a hundred percent. Like the, they probably just got some dudes like LARP of that guy. I just love how the way to be possessed with the spirit of Papa Voodoo is you have to get a full like lungs full of Cuban <laughs> cigar smoke blown in your face and then your eyes flash red and then you turn into Papa Voodoo so he goes Papa Voodoo winds up back in LA with this song that can turn people into zombies and that's where we get the zombies it's One, not even a specific song is it it's just whatever music it's he music, yeah. just, <laughs> just his, it's just his music that can turn him into zombies because the first one he does a nasty guitar rift and then it just brings all his dead homies back he comes back to LA, has this music. Uh, the guy who they captured to get information on Jimmy Vanilla gets turned into a zombie and is carted off to the hospital. They go to the they go to the hospital, and what happens, Aiden? They decapitate him with the McDonald's uh... <laughs> the dull lunch tray. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and then they go back to the police station. Oh, we didn't talk about uh, Blackman. Oh, uh, we'll Sergeant about... Blackman. Sergeant... We'll talk about Blackman. Yeah, so tell us, tell us about Black Man, <laughs> the chief of police there. And um, when you, when it goes and introduces him, it shows the name on the door. And you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> you're just like, ah. Uh, uh-oh, uh-oh. The door opens. And then I, it's like, with the color grading, I couldn't tell if this was like just a guy who was like a lighter shade of brown or if it was like a dude with blackface because it was just so weird because it made it all like green you tried going on imdb and you couldn't find no anything. i can't find a picture of him my money is on i think this guy was pakistani well i know who the actor is the actor is um george galvan so that doesn't really help us does it maybe he's like chilean it's funny too because it's like the accent of a guy who 
is obviously like Eng- English is a second language, but he's like trying to do some kind of like high like accent concealing. Rabbit dog. Yeah. Do you see any rabbit dog around here? Man, this is getting crazy. It was really funny because like Blackman's voice is like, hey. I'm black man. Get get in here right now. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. Get you get with that guy right now. Or I'm gonna eat the Charlie. What what you f-ing decapitated a man? <laughs> hey, what the hell happened at the hospital? Do you have to call me and say you guys behaving the patient? The yeah. hospital just called me. They <laughs> freaking out for crying out loud. Yeah, no, you decapitated a patient. You know we don't. You did it again. <laughs> then he, then that next scene, they find the tape on the the guy's body, and then they uh, they play the tape. This dude plays it, listening to like his boombox in the room, and then one of the detectives becomes a zombie, and then Black Man just proceeds to blow this dude's head off. They live in a world where they've never heard of zombies before, yeah. and he just does not hesitate to blow this guy's yeah. head off. The police chief just bam, his he's like, he's like is sweating gone. a little bit, some of his veins are popping, they're like numb. <laughs> and wasn't he like the husband of like the other girl, and she just like... She didn't care! Well, she was like weeping over him, and she got over it. It was like that, though. It was crazy quick. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, Sergeant Blackman. We're pretty much close to the end. They just send them to become... Oh, the... Oh, the, the, the priest Mick something. Uh, McCardigan. <laughs> McCardigan. He's like a... He's just, like a Latino guy. They gave him like an Irish name. <laughs> he sends them on the quest to find like the slavery swords. Yeah. And yeah, the slave swords. Well, no, they go. They're like, yo, this dude, he like turned into a weird zombie or something. And then he's like, oh, yeah, let me tell you literally everything that happened behind the scenes. He's they didn't like have to investigate to find out what happened to the mobster. Somehow this random priest was like, yeah, they took him to Haiti. And they put <laughs> Papa Voodoo inside <laughs> he was of him. There. He was, it's like, how does he know? Probably the God figure in this movie. Yeah. I mean, they did make him look very Jesus-like. They did. And I would like to point out there are three swords for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh my gosh. So I wanted to talk about how in order to get the swords, they needed to first become Kung Fu Masters, which they did over a two minute And it was literally montage. just like a regular show segment. Yeah. A they lot of this movie was they just They learned how to show. do the butterfly swim. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't do any kung fu. They just had a Chinese guy hit him with a stick <laughs> a couple stick of times, and they, they like worked out at a gym. <laughs> and you know where they found that guy in a Chinese restaurant? Like, yeah, and he comes out, and like the first thing he says is he's like, "Don't order the Cantonese <laughs> duck." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're just like, "Are you Master Win? <laughs> Are you Master Win?" <laughs> also, the, oh yeah, and then when they're gonna go into the cave of death, they're like. Do you have any advice before we go into the cave? (laughs) And he's like, that is where you will find the sword. It's like, we already knew that. (laughs) So how it ends is they get the swords. They go into the cave. Bruce Lee is there, but dead. Bruce Lee's dead somehow. (laughs) Bruce Lee's dead. There were no (laughs) traps. There was no traps. (laughs) There was like a a mound with three swords and like some laser apparatus like around it. But But no, nothing. Uh, And they only took... Two out of the three swords, because they said, oh, the third one must be the trap sword, Mm -hmm. which I guess didn't end up being the case because of the priest later. Yeah, yeah. uh, I thought, I thought, me and Aiden were saying, like, that's probably the excuse so it doesn't, like, they could get away. They're like, oh, they didn't trigger the trap. Uh, So they get the swords, and they go to a show where... Oh, all goodness. the street teens are there to watch. Yeah, Papa all of the throw down very seven, all the very seventies <laughs> teens are there to listen to Papa Voodoo's music. They all get turned into zombies. There's an action sequence where. Oh, Jack! You gotta mention Jack. You want to talk about Jack? Because I, I, we could go on at, about Jack. Listen, I was looking at IMDb <laughs> during that part. Jack so. is Jack's. He's the real hero of the yeah, show. Yeah, he's a killing machine. <laughs> he's a killing machine who works for the police. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're like, oh, we got Jack. He's a killing machine. And then he kills himself. On he ice. tries to bang on the window with his gun and just shoots himself. <laughs> Were they, like, shocked at all at Jack's death? Yeah. Or? Okay. I. They stared through the hole in his I missed head that for, spot. like, ten seconds. That was the, the one of the, that was actually probably the most like appra- impressive gore effect they did because all the blood like all the little jibs of blood was just like the a CG which is a sin, 
but then but like straight up somehow they got like a prosthetic head with an actual like hole in it looking it's probably thing. like their whole like yeah the, budget. <laughs> the whole budget they were like oh shoot the makeup artist we could only pay her for this so with their swords they kill a bunch of zombies and uh with headphones. they all had headphones on which was smart because like oh yeah we can't be turned into a zombie if but we then don't. they take their headphones off right at the end when the, they <laughs> they kill all the they yeah. kill all the zombies who weren't playing music and then take their <laughs> headphones off to go fight the guy who can play music. Yeah, so they go back. You know what? I just realized we haven't mentioned Claire at all. That's because there's nothing to mention. Like, yeah, so the the lady on the front is allegedly Claire, uh, the daughter of uh, Vargas's partner. She gets kidnapped. She's backstage. And... Uh, She's Papa Voodoo's, there. yeah, Papa Voodoo's. The, she, I, what, is she even tied up? She's just in a chair. He's gonna make her his voodoo wife. <laughs> her voodoo yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah. Have a voodoo child. Like, oh, we're gonna have a voodoo baby. <laughs> it will rule the oh, world. Lord, he will, yeah, I'm going to make her my voodoo wife, and then we are gonna have a voodoo baby, and he's gonna rule the world. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Beautiful ending, but then you know, Jesus shows up with the third sword, McCardigan. Yeah, and he, so the priest shows up with the third sword, stabs Papa Voodoo in the back, and that's pretty much it. And then they cut Papa Voodoo's head off because that this beheading stab through the chest didn't do it. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much the end. Is and there? they go to fight disco vampires. Ashen, mm. would you say that this movie is a good example of a period piece? <laughs> <laughs> you're putting me on the spot as the history major <laughs> well uh i thought the movie was bad but not like so bad it's good uh it's no despiser what would you rate it out of 33 out of 33 is that is that our official scale for this series i'm just asking you okay um well if i had to rate this movie out of 33 uh let's see some of the cinematography was good the costumes were good um a lot of extras for a movie like this. I'd give it maybe a 15 out of 33. Bold of you to say that. What about you, Aiden? What did you like about this movie? Do you think it's a good, bad movie? And uh, what would you give it out of 33? I wanna, first and foremost, I want to praise this movie for being as brave <laughs> as it was. I think the romance was uh, just very... Uh, Underdeveloped. I was going to say fashion forward. <laughs> I think that there was just a lot of really good aspects to it um i don't know dialogue was on point i think there was a lot of good editing decisions you could really see the director and the editor coming together to form a real cohesive direction the director's brother was the editor (laughs) (laughs) that's why that's why it had a good connection honestly though i do think this movie at least in the first part had its own unique style like they lost it. It did. Like they got lazy throughout, but like with the freeze frames, with the splash text when they introduce a new character, I and they had their own songs too. I will. I will yeah, say, like, like when Charlie Vargas came in, it was like Charlie Vargas, <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Vargas. <laughs> I will say this though, for as incohesive as this movie was, I understood a lot of the plot which is rare for these kind of movies. Usually you walk away being like, why did they do what they did? <laughs> like if you happened? if you break the movie into plot points, it makes sense. Roughly. Okay. So, yeah. with all that praise behind me, 11 out of 33. 11 out of 33. Ashton, same questions for you. What did you like about this movie? What did you not like? Is it a good, bad movie? And what would you rate it out of 33? Um. Well, let's start about with the with what I liked. I think the movie was definitely they like they had an aesthetic they were going for and you know and that aesthetic I, was racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. But yeah, also like a lot of homophobic slurs too. We didn't talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um but like I don't know like the costume design um sometimes like in some scenes like it looked really good. Like some of the uh, you know, like some scenes just were shot so well. Like I remember, there's a scene where it, it's in the flashback where they're in the bar and it's him coming out of the the stall for the bathroom. But I remember it was just framed good because he was like framed really well in the in the like door to the stall and the camera zooms in perfectly. Um, 
And then they did a lot of the like slow motion tropes like you see in like 70s movies and stuff, which was cool. I, I think like it was kind of charming. I think that was like a little, you know, charming because it was like, wow, they like they got some of that. Like they did a good job at least parodying, parody, uh, parodying um, that kind of 70s style, you know. <laughs> But at the same time, it's like, yeah, what I didn't like is like <laughs> just the like weird like I, I literally when we saw the title, uh, I don't know if Jason recorded this, but I said like there's going to be some kind of racial humor <laughs> in this. And then it cuts to Mexico and he's riding a taxi that's like a donkey <laughs> with the word taxi on the side. <laughs> that's bold. <laughs> that's bold. <laughs> Classic. You set the bar too high already. Daring. I'm loving the cinematography so far. See, we're already getting a racist joke about Mexicans. I was telling you, I told you, I said, Taxi. I said there's going to be some like racist humor in this show. <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> right, right from the you, that's start. When you, you know what you're in for. I just saw the picture. Like It was just literally like this title like thing, and I just saw that, and I was like, you know, this seems like a movie that's going to have racial humor in it. <laughs> just immediately the first joke. So it's like, yeah, that was a little weird. Um, <laughs> also, it seemed like they didn't really mic up the actors sometimes because they would like when they're talking away, it would be like, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop, you know, Papa Voodoo is gonna be good as soon. Yeah, the, yeah, that we gotta make sure we <laughs> that he's coming back. <laughs> yeah, or, um, um, or just like, I don't know, like. They use zombies in the promotional cover. So you think, like, this is going to be a zombie movie. They're going to kill, like, hundreds of zombies. and But it's like, no, that is only a plot point, like, around the end of the movie. It's like the... It's got to be, like, at least chapter 8 is when the zombies come Yeah, out. yeah. The movie split into 13 chapters somehow. I was just... I was waiting the whole movie for chapter 2 to pop up. <laughs> yeah. I think for my score, I will definitely... I'd probably say... Jason was right, like a 15 out of 33 was a great score. Um, over, charming aesthetically movie, but they tried a little too hard at some points with that like weird film grain. Um, and that then also just the worst so dialogue I've ever heard in movies. Where he's like, hey, do you want to come have dinner with my family? He's like, what are you of? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> He's like, no, we're just trying to be friends. Or they're like, yeah, they say that word all the time. His his mom asks him, like, why don't you got a wife? What are you, gay? And then (laughs) he's he's like, like, what'd she say? Because she said it in Italian. He's like, she's asking if you're up. (laughs) Uh, And he's like, no, I just haven't found anyone. He's like, like, ah, see, you're you're in the closet. (laughs) So, like, period piece for the 70s or just homophobic in 2018 <laughs> i don't know I, that, I will say the biggest shock for me was that this movie was filmed in 2018 it felt like something it was out of time <laughs> yeah um well our average score for this movie was 13.6 out of 33 so that's what we're giving it no it's not 13.6 it's 13.6 six 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 seven seven Almost in sync. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Yay, confetti effects! Wow! <laughs> That's so fun. Um, but yeah, uh, that was fun. Anything else you want to say? Because the hardest part is ending the video.